We're the Molin sisters and we grew up here at Bratty Village. Book, no books. My name is Laurel. I started here teaching swimming lessons. I also was a camp counselor. I then was a head of swim camp and now I'm currently teaching a building blocks program which is a social skills class for children with special needs. I'm Carly. Where would you like to go? And I started off kind of the same way. I started in the pool doing lifeguarding and then teaching some swimming classes and then I transitioned to camp and then after camp I now kind of work in some of the programs in our field house. You want to tell them your name? She's verbal but she would still be considered lower functioning. Um, she's also got a physical disability as well as a mental disability so she has an artificial leg which doesn't stop her from doing a lot of things. She goes to school and she she knows a lot of things and she needs some, some assistance. Gosh, Ashlyn, swim. My friend and I, we were kind of brainstorming some programs that we've done at Bratty Village and then we were starting to see this gap. Snoozeland. A lot of the times social skills programs that we were looking up are very costly and my dad's constantly looking for programs to be able to put her in that are more than half an hour so that he can get away, do something that maybe she doesn't want to do and have that time to himself. When I was looking through the social skills programs that were offered at other facilities and social skills programs that were offered through other community organizations. I noticed a lot of them were very limiting. So your child had to have Asperger's to enter the program or your child had to be able to make sentences to enter the program and things like that. We kind of thought, hmm, maybe we can improve on those or kind of use those as our guidelines and Building Blocks has been running for about three years at Bright Village. It's an hour and a half program and each week we would have a different skill that we were working on. So whether it was sharing or taking turns, um, personal space, things like that that we can kind of work on as a team. So teaching them what society norms are is a crucial part in them um, becoming a contributing member through different activities. Transitioning often with kids with any type of disability is a little bit tricky. We know where the anxiety is coming from. It's switching from the car to the facility or from one room to the pool. It's completely different for each child, but it's figuring out what we can help them with and how to make them as comfortable as possible, trying to come up with the best solution. All around and the green grass grows all around. The first 15 minutes of building blocks is usually um, just kind of free play, so we usually have a lot of toys out and available for them to do. Um, so whether it's a board game or Lego or the books, things like that, that they can kind of come in and just get comfortable as people are coming in and out of the room. Snooze Lynn. Usually after the 15 minutes we come and do a type of circle times. Jasper, come finish our story with us. So that one is more of a sit down, songs, how are you feeling today, um, a book, things like that just kind of based on what the children are interested in. Can you find toys? So this is a multi-sensory room. Um, it's got a lot of stimulation in it. It's used for children or adults with special needs. A lot of the times children get overstimulated and they enjoy coming in here to kind of calm down and relax. Um, for some kids it works really well and then for other kids it's not their thing. Will and Jack, we had the opportunity of meeting them through camps. As we were both head counselors, we got to know them and got to know their family. Keep going Jack, you're doing a good job. When we had talked about possibly having a building blocks program, they were two names that came to mind in children that we thought could use that support. Come. My name is Ian Shearer. Will and Jack are uh, 9 and 10 years old now. Uh, they're, they, while they have the same diagnosis, uh, which is Fragile X and Autism, uh, they're polar opposites as far as personalities are concerned. Uh, Will is uh, very social. Uh, he likes a lot of social contact. He likes a lot of physical contact. Uh, Jack is um, a very determined little guy. Uh, he has very high anxiety, unfortunately, uh, which masks a lot of his uh, intelligence and cleverness. Kid likes sports, whereas Will much prefers computers and reading. I do not like green eggs and ham. With autism, uh, it's very difficult for them to, to, uh, to understand the social cues of other kids. And not only other kids, but other adults in general. The Building Blocks program, it's a social program, which is really important for our boys uh, because it gets them understanding and learning how to interact and how to uh, socialize uh, in, a, in a different setting other than school. Uh, it also gives the parents a little bit of a break on a Saturday morning. A place where the wild things are. Uh, 
but more importantly for the kids, it gives them a chance uh, to um, understand things like uh, show and tell, social circles, friendship, and, uh, and just doing activities with other kids. Come on, bud. The, the improvement that they've had through the Building, Pro Building Blocks program has been primarily due to the people that run it. Specifically, Laurel and, and, uh, and Carly have been a huge, huge help. So some of the really yeah, uh, cool things like that they've uh, done is, is involved a show and tell, uh, which for Will yeah. is, is much easier. Uh, for Jack, with very high anxiety, it's, it's much more difficult. But what we've seen with him is being able to break out of his shell a little bit and, and be able to participate uh, in, a, in a more social circle without yeah. having anxiety well, that, yeah. uh, push him down a little bit. And they've been developing through the program. They're growing like any other kid their age. They're just learning, exploring, and they're starting to communicate more. Obviously the goals are different depending on the, the child. A lot of the time it's a matter of personal space, so them realizing the difference between at home and here and people they know, people they don't know, and kind of exposing them to things like that. So that's been a big focus from the start. Like if they wanted our attention, it would a lot of the time be like, oh, I'm gonna go and do something maybe on the negative side so that you have to come over and see me versus now they'll come over and grab your hand and pull you to where they want you to go or show you what they want you to do, which is like a really nice would you like to read routine to see. People? What does it say? When you're younger, you don't really know anything different. Growing up with Ashlyn, it was always just the norm. She was, has always been the norm. Um, but then as you get older and you start to realize, oh, people are looking at her, oh, people are doing this, and things like that, so you kind of start to see the differences. But I think definitely having her in my life has made a passion for special education. So now teaching in the TDSB, always wanting to help those kids that need that extra support and things like that have been a big part. Right. Why is oh, it? No, no, no. Gonna start crying. <laughs> oh no! Why is this Other so? Tears. Why is this so emotional for you? It's something that's kind of been in our lives, and like we're so happy we get to share like this place. But Variety Village has always been special to us, and our sister is <laughs> obviously very important to us. And we know um, she's different, and she deals with a lot of things that we don't deal with. So it's kind of hard as us trying to support her and do everything we can for her and still Today I'm feeling and still be here and now I'm gonna start crying because she's crying. <laughs> okay, point please. This, this place is a very, very special place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a place where uh, kids can be normal and it's a place where uh, they can be social with other kids, whether they have a disability or whether they don't have a disability. It's a place where everybody is who they are. And no matter what sort of abilities they have or what sort of disabilities they have, whether they have one or they, or they don't. And for uh, parents, that's priceless. And Variety Village is like another <laughs> family to us. It's a place where people come and they work and they volunteer or they bring their kids and you can't help but be attached to everybody that walks through the door because everybody just cares so much.